let's check out Red, shall we? Uh, before we jump into it, we're just going to do yet another plug because we're going to chop these up on YouTube. Um, yet another plug of our uh, new uh, merch line, Equipped Creatures, on bonfire.com slash store slash equip. These are pieces of merch for Magic the Gathering fans. Shirts and hoodies and crop tops and mugs that are inspired by the places we love, the characters we love, the colloquialisms and short shorthand that we love, uh, cards that we love. We've got um, keyword shirts. We've got um, some fun colloquial shirts. I really love them, and we're working on more designs as we speak, so definitely check that out bonfire.com slash store slash equip to get some cool new merch inspired by the game that we all love to play check it out let's jump into red our first red card is aki scrap chomper one red for a one one phyrexian goblin pay one and a red and tap it to sacrifice an artifact or land and draw a card Wow, or land. That's pretty big. Uh, next up, we have Beamtown Beatstick. One red for an equipment artifact. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus oh, and has menace. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player or battle, create a treasure token with an equip cost of two. Not too bad. Nice little treasure creator there. Uh, this one I'm very excited about. Blood Feather Phoenix. One in a Red for a 2-2 Phoenix with flying. Blood Feather Phoenix can't block. Whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control deals damage to an opponent or battle, you may pay red. If you do, return Blood Feather Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. I have recently taken a weird turn in the fact that I've sideboarded out my lovely Demir control deck that I've been playing for a long time and have recently built and started playing the is it Phoenix combo deck and I'm having a lot of fun with it so um partially interested in this because I think the idea of you know Phoenix is it Phoenix coming back to modern or to standard is really intriguing adding um Another hasty creature to um, the modern build of the Phoenix deck is also intriguing. Um, this one's a little bit different because it's not the amount of spells you cast, but specifically spells that deal direct damage to players or battles, which is, albeit, a lot of battles or a lot of cards. So Bloodfeather Phoenix might be a nice addition to both the Pioneer and... Uh, standard versions of the Is It Spells deck. I'm very excited about this one. Uh, next up, we have Burning Sun's Fury. One and a red for an instant with Convoke. Up to two target creatures. Each get plus two, plus O, oh, and gain haste until end of turn. Not too bad. Uh, then we have Chandra Hope's Beacon. Our second Planeswalker of the set so far. I believe there's only three. Um, Chandra Hope's Beacon is 4 red red for a 5 loyalty legendary planeswalker Chandra its static ability is whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell copy it you may choose new targets for the copy this ability only triggers once each turn and then you can plus 2 add too many add too many wow plus 2 add 2 mana in any combination of colors Plus one, exile the top five cards of your library until end of your next turn. You may cast an instant or sorcery spell from among those exiled cards. Or minus X, Chandra's Hope's Beacon deals X damage to each of up to two targets. So you can do battles, players, creatures, planeswalkers. That's pretty good. Um, I like this card a lot. Uh, it's a little expensive to play in, like, say, the Phoenix deck I was talking about a minute ago, but it's pretty exciting. Uh, next up, we have City on Fire. Five red, red, red. 
for an enchantment with Convoke. If a source you would, con if a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage instead. That's pretty crazy. That is crazy. Um, pretty cool card. I don't know how much play it's gonna get in constructed. It might get quite a bit more in limited. Maybe not. The convoke ability definitely helps it quite a lot. It is eight mana that you can make cheaper. Uh, coming in hot is one red for an instant target creature gets plus one plus oh and gains first strike until end of turn. Gry one. Nice little combat trick. And then we've got Itali Primal Conqueror. Five red red for a seven seven elder dinosaur with trample legendary creature. Sorry. Uh, when Itali enters the battlefield, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. You may cast any number of spells from among the non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. Then, you may pay 9 and a green Phyrexian, transform Itali into Itali Primal Sickness. An 11-11 Primal Elder or... Phyrexian Elder Dinosaur with Trample and Indestructible. When, pri when Atali Primal Sickness deals combat damage to a player, they get that many poison counters. So, one hit from Atali and you're dead. It's a lot of setup. You pay 7 to play Atali and then you have to pay 9 or 10 to transform them. But you just have to hit an opponent once and they're dead. Uh, next up we have Fearless Scald. Four and a red for a 3-2 Dwarf Berserker with backup one. So just as a reminder, backup means that when this creature enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature. If that's another creature, it gains the following ability until end of turn. And the ability in question is Double Strike. So you can play this. You put... You pay... You, Put the backup on someone else and it gets double strike until end of turn and a 1-1 one, one counter. Or you can play this and you put the 1-1 one, one counter on itself, um, but then you're not passing on the ability. I think most of these backup cards are only going to be useful if you're using the backup ability to give something else an ability um, and a counter. I think otherwise, if you're just going to put the... Uh, counter on this card it's never going to be as useful um next up this is also a dwarf too so my brother's gonna be really excited more dwarves next up we have furnace gremlin one in a red for a one two phyrexian gremlin one in a red furnace gremlin gets plus one plus oh until end of turn when furnace gremlin dies incubate x or x is its power so this is pretty neat because you can activate this ability infinite times as long as you have the mana to pay for it. So if someone targets this with a kill spell, um, you can pay all this mana, pay as much mana as you can, and it will incubate a larger creature when it, a larger token when it dies. Um, for a reminder, because this is the first time it's come up in red so far, incubate means create an incubator token with X11 counters on it and pay to transform this incubator token into a zero zero artifact phyrexian creature um the amount of token uh counters on it means how powerful it's going to be when you transform it it's a neat little mechanic uh we haven't we haven't seen a lot of this set be played so far so it's hard to tell from where we're sitting how powerful incubation is going to be but there's a lot of it so definitely don't count it out um, next up, we have Furnace Host Charger. Five and a red for a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian Giant with haste. This, is, this has land cycling, so each color in this set has a land cycling card. For the most part, all of the land cycling cards have been pretty underwhelming. They're not really cards you want to play for face value. A 5-5 five, five for six with haste isn't too bad, actually. It's probably one of the better land cycling cards we've seen so far. Um, but mountain cycling means that you can pay two to discard Furnace Host Charger from your hand and search your library for a mountain card, reveal it, 
put it onto into your hand, then shuffle. It is very important, and I'm just noticing this now, that um, that you understand that it reads a mountain card, not a basic mountain. So this doesn't search for just a basic mountain. This searches for anything that has mountain on it in its card type. Um, so a lot of the dual lands, um, a, a lot of the pain lands have uh, these types of names on it. So anything that says mountain, you can get from your library um, just by casting this for its land cycling cost. Um, and I'm assuming that the three we've seen so far prior to this one all say the same thing. So that is a big bonus to uh, fetch for a specific land. If you're playing limited, uh, these are definitely good cards to pick up. They might be good to include in commander decks as well. We'll have to wait and see. Not really going to be a big player in standard. Um, sorry, constructed. It might be a big player in standard, um, but it's not going to be in constructed in general. Next up, we have Furnace Reigns. Two and a red for a sorcery. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. Until end of turn, it gains haste. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or battle, create a treasure token. Um, that's pretty good. Nice little uh, claim the firstborn makes treasures. I don't mind that very much. Next up, we have Hanger Scrounger. Oh, another dwarf. Nice. Two and a red for a 2-1 dwarf pilot with backup one. Whenever this creature becomes tapped, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. So pilots are usually useful for crewing up um, vehicles, which also taps them. Um, so whenever this creature becomes tapped, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. That's pretty good. Uh, next up, we have Harried Artisan. Two and a red for a 2-3 human artificer with haste. And then you can pay three and a Phyrexian to transform Harried Artisan. Activate only as a sorcery. And it transforms into Phyrexian Sky Flare. A 3-4 Phyrexian artificer with flying and haste. Pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have Into the Fire. This is one of my favorite cards of this color. Um, also a big moment in the story, which I really liked. Um, two and a red for a sorcery. Choose one. Into the fire deals two damage to each creature, planeswalker, and battle. Put any number of cards from your hand onto the bottom of your library, then draw that many cards plus one. Um, yeah, I don't... Other than maybe replacing fire prophecy in the is it creativity deck i don't know if the second option on this card is very good most of the time when you're playing red um red blue red black you want to put those cards into your graveyard not onto the bottom of your library so unless you have ways to tutor things from your library i feel like the first choice on this sorcery is going to be the one chosen most of the time um it also triggers the phoenix which is really nice but otherwise it's just a standard deals two damage to everything um except for players uh next up we have our first battle of red um so just to run over this real quickly um battle is a new card type and siege is the subtype all of the battles in march of the machine are all sieges um in the future, there might be different battles with different subtypes. So keep in mind that the rules for sieges are for sieges specifically and other battles in the future might have different subtypes. So they might have different rules. Um, as a siege enters, you choose an opponent to protect it. You and others can attack it. When it is defeated, exile it and cast it transformed. Um, so basically it's like giving your opponents a a planeswalker with no abilities that they have to protect because if you manage to defeat it and flip it, usually it's pretty good. So uh, this one is Invasion of Kaldheim, three and a red 
When Invasion of Kaldheim enters the battlefield, exile all cards from your hand, then draw that many cards. Until the end of your next turn, you may play cards exiled this way. So if you have four cards in hand, you play this, you exile those four, you draw four more, and then you can play the cards from exile um, until the end of your next turn, which isn't bad. And then you've got four to uh, counters on this battle. So once you defeat it, it turns into Pyre of the World Tree, an enchantment that says, discard a land card, Pyre of the World Tree deals two damage to any target. This you can do indefinitely. Um, there's no stipulation on being able to discard it. So if you have a discard outlet, something that says whenever anything enters the battlefield or enters the graveyard, this works indefinitely with those. Um, basically, you can discard a land card anytime you want as long as you have a land card in hand and it deals two damage to any target. Uh, whenever you discard a land card, exile the top card of your library and you may play that card this turn. So that's interesting. So if you discard during your opponent's turn, you can only play Flash, uh, Instance, stuff like that. If you discard it during your turn and deal two damage to any target, you can uh, play it, whatever card it is, uh, for the rest of that turn. Kind of interesting. I like it. For four mana... Um, you know, you just hit this with two lightning strikes and it's done. Or one lightning strike and a play with fire. And then you get the pyre of the world tree, which means you can discard land and deal two damage to any target. That's a pretty neat little burn combo. Uh, next up, we have invasion of Karsus. Two red red for a battle siege. When invasion of Karsus enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Pretty good potential board wipe. And it has four uh, counters on it. When it def when it's defeated, it transforms into refraction element, a four four elemental creature with ward to life. Whenever you cast a spell, refraction element deals two damage to each opponent. This is pretty good. In combination with the uh, Invasion of Kaldheim, it's not too bad. Next up, we have Invasion of Markadia. Markadia? One and a red for a battle siege. Uh, when Invasion of Markadia enters the battlefield, you may discard a card if you do draw two cards. That's pretty good. And it turns into Chiron Flamerite, a 3 3 goblin spell shaper. Pay two and a red, tap it to discard a card, create two one one blue and red elemental creature tokens. Creatures you control get plus one plus oh and gain haste until end of turn. So you basically make two two ones that you can attack with immediately. That's pretty interesting. I like the front side of it a little bit better than the back side, but still pretty cool. Um next up we have oh that's the wrong side. Some of these downloaded in a weird order. Um, invasion of Ragath, Ragantha, Reg, Ragatha. Two and a red for a, a battle siege. An invasion of Ragatha enters the battlefield. It deals four damage to another target battle or opponent and one damage to up to one target creature. It has five counters on it. When it's defeated, it turns into Disciples of the Inferno. A 4-4 four, four human monk with prowess. If a non-creature source you control would deal damage to a creature, battle, or opponent, it deals that much plus two instead. That's pretty good. Three mana plus five counters to defeat it. That's not bad. If you can defeat it right away, that's a pretty good play. Uh, next up, we have Invasion of Tarkir. One in a red for a mythic battle. When Invasion of Tarkir enters the battlefield, reveal any number of dragon cards from your hand. When you do, Invasion of Tarkir deals X plus 2 damage to any other target, where X is the number of cards revealed this way. So you could reveal a whole handful of dragons and deal 9 damage to something? Dang. 
That's pretty cool. And then it has five counters on it. When you defeat the five, um, actually, does this what what order does this happen? When invasion enters the battlefield, reveal any number. Okay, so as soon as this hits the battlefield, you can reveal three dragons from your hand and immediately kill the battle. And it turns into Defiant Thunder Maw, a four-four dragon with flying and trample. Whenever a dragon you control attacks, it deals two damage to any target. Wow. That is insane. Uh, yeah. I'm glad it's mythic. That's, that is an intense battle. Uh, next up we have Karsith, Karsis Depth Guard. That is hard to say. Two and a red for a 4-3 Viashina Warrior with Defender. As long as Karthus Depth Guard's power is 5 or greater, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So all of those cards that give your creatures plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn helps the uh, Depth Guard here attack, which is pretty neat. Uh, next up we have the other card I'm watching very closely. Kenra Spellspear. 1 and a red for a 2-2 Jackal Warrior with Trample and Prowess. Prowess means whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it gets plus one. This creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. And then it has three and a Phyrexian blue. Transform Kenra Spellspear into Gataxian Spell Stalker. A 3-3 three, three Phyrexian Jackal with Trample and Ward 2. Plus Prowess, Prowess. Which means that each instance of Prowess triggers separately. So instead of it saying Prowess 2, it says Prowess, Prowess. So you cast a one mana burn spell. This guy gets plus one, plus one. And then you cast, and then it gets another plus one, plus one. So instead of it saying prowess two, it just says prowess, prowess, which means that it can be countered at certain points, or I guess I'm not entirely sure as to why they would word it that way instead of just having prowess times two. Maybe they don't have a clean way of describing Prowess 2 or something like that. But anyway, I'm very excited for this in this new Phoenix deck um, that I'm slowly workshopping on Moxfield. Um, very excited. Next up, we have Lithomantic Barrage. One red for a sorcery. This spell can't be countered. Lithomantic Barrage deals one damage to target creature or planeswalker. It deals five damage instead if that target is white or blue. So there has been quite a few cards that um, are amazing sideboard cards so far. Um, you know, we've seen green white ones, we've seen black red ones, we've seen white blue ones. Um, Lithomantic Barrage, even though it's sorcery, which isn't the best, um, is a, an absolute shoe in for sideboarding against white and blue cards uh decks so put four of these in your sideboard if you're playing a white and blue deck sideboard these in in game two um absolutely amazing love it next up we have marauding dreadship the coolest art on the worst card in the set goes to marauding dreadship uh two and a red for a four one artifact vehicle with haste Rotting Dreadship enters the battlefield, Incubate 2, uh, and it has Crew 2. I think that that art is exceptional. Turning a um, Kaldheim-like Viking warship into something that looks like a Phyrexian monster is a daunting task, to say the least. And this card art is insane um but the card is absolute garbage sure you get the incubate too but uh you just you don't want to do this you don't you can attack for four on turn three i guess if but it's immediately blocked by anything nobody is gonna let this through um yeah Best card on the worst art award goes to Marauding Dreadship. 
Next up, we have Mirin Bane Splitter. One red for an artifact equipment with flash. Marie, when Mirin Bane Splitter enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Equip creature gets plus two plus O, oh, and it has an equip cost of three. Just a standard little power buff. Um, if your deck cares about artifacts or if your creatures need the plus two plus O oh, for any reason, um, it's not bad. It also immediately attaches to something, so it's great to play as a combat trick in decks that care about equipment or artifacts. Uh, next up, we have Nahiri's Warcrafting. One red red for a sorcery. Nahiri's Warcrafting deals five damage to target creature, planeswalker, or battle. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is the excess damage dealt this way. You may exile one of those cards. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order or in a random order. You may play the exiled card this turn. So that's interesting. Sorcery speed deal five damage is already pretty decent. Um, three mana is more than I'd like, but also acceptable for five damage. Um, to t the fact that I can't do it to face kind of sucks. Um, but if you were to attack a player with it, you would never get to deal excess damage. So I understand why they did target creature, planeswalker, or battle. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully you get to look at one or two cards, maybe even three or four cards. If you're just going to kill a little one, one or something, um, if you're playing against those pesky Skrelv decks, this would be a good card to kill Skrelv. You get to look at four cards, exile one of them. Pretty neat. Next up, we have Onake Javelinier. Four and a red for a 5-4 Ogre Spirit with Reach. Tap Onake Javelin Javelinier. Deals two damage to target player or battle. I like that. Uh, next up, we have Pyretic Prankster. Oh, look, they're burning the Phyrexian symbol into the door. One and a red for a 2-1 Devil Creature. Pay three and a black to transform it into... Glistening Goremonger. Oh, damn. 3-2 Phyrexian Devil. When Goremonger dies, each opponent sacrifices an artifact or creature. That's pretty good. I don't mind that at all. Next up, we have Ral's Reinforcements. Finally, we get a Ral card. One and a red for a sorcery. Create two, one, one, blue and red elemental creature tokens. Oh. I mean, I guess that's fine. It's not exciting or anything, but it'll do. It'll do. Hold on. Just feeling a little weird about where my microphone is at right now. Hello. 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 Uh, next up, we have Remote Ramosian Greatsword. Four and a red for an artifact equipment with Convoke. Interesting. Equip creature gets plus three, plus one, and has trample. Equip two. Also interesting. There's a weird little balance dynamic where you convoke it with creatures you don't want to attack this turn so that you can afford to equip it to a creature you do want to attack this turn. Interesting. I kind of like that play style. Um, Rampaging Raptor is next. Two red red for a 4-4 dinosaur creature with Trample and Haste. Oh, shoy. Two and a red. Rampaging Raptor gets plus two plus oh until end of turn. Whenever it deals damage, combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls or battle that player protects. Wow, that's going to be really good. That is going to be really good, I think. All right, red cap heel slasher, three and a red for a two three goblin rogue. Yes, rogues in red. Uh, back up one, so you can give something else plus one plus one and first strike until end of turn. That's okay, kind of boring. And we've got scrappy bruiser, three and a red for a three four raccoon warrior. 
When Scrappy Bruiser attacks, up to one target attacking creature gets plus two, plus oh, and gains trample until end of turn. Return that creature to its owner's hand at the end of combat. Interesting. The flavor text says, my flesh is an affront to existence. Come say that to my fist, you bloated rust bucket. Coco Riveteer's welder. That's so New Jersey of him. Uh, next up, we have Searing Barb. Oh, look at this fancy man getting stabbed. Searing Barb is two and a red for a sorcery. Searing Barb deals two damage to any target. If it's a creature, it can't block this turn. Incubate one. It can't block this turn. Why would I want to do that? Why would anybody want to do that? So if they have like something big on the board, say, say I have like four one ones and they have a five, five, I can hit it for two with searing barb. It can't block. So I get through with my five fives, but then what? I just let it regenerate that health. And attack next turn. I could just kill it. How much was that? How much was that Chandra card? Wait, where did it go? Nahiri's card. This is one more mana, and I get to kill it? I don't... Yeah, I don't understand. I don't know why I'd ever want to do this. Uh, not good. Shatter the Source is the next card. Five and a red for an instant with Convoke. Choose one. Shatter the Source deals six damage to target creature, planeswalker, or battle. Or destroy target artifact. Way too expensive, even with Convoke. Um, yeah. In an emergency, dealing six damage to a creature, planeswalker, or battle, sure. I don't mind that. Um, tap as much as you can. You know, make this as cheap as you can to cast it. Um, if you kill a battle with it, you can pay one and bring your Phoenix back and attack this turn, even though you Convoked with all your creatures prior. Um, yeah, it's okay. I don't love it. Shivan Branch Burner is next. Five red red for a 4-4 four, four dragon with Convoke and Flying and Haste. Nice. Not bad. Standard dragon action. Stoke the Flames is next. I like this one. Two red red for an instant with Convoke. Stoke the Flame deals four damage to any target. So this is great because this goes face... Cast at instant speed, convoke. So if I have no healthy attacks, I can still I can make this cheaper. Um, I dig it. I dig it. Uh, thrashing frontliner. Oh, that's a cool card. That's is that like an alligator Phyrexian beast? One in a red for a. Oh, it says right there two two Phyrexian Viashino. So it's like a dragon born with trample. Whenever Thrashing Frontliner attacks as a battle, it gets plus one and plus one until end of turn. Not bad. Next up, we have Trailblazing Historian. That's cool. One red for a 1-3 Human Shaman with haste. Tap it, another target creature gains haste until end of turn. Meh. Uh, then we have Urabrask, one the fourth of the Praetors. Um, Urabrask is two red red for a 4-4 four, four Phyrexian Praetor legendary creature with first strike. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Urabrask deals one damage to target opponent, add red, one red mana. Love that. Already love that. Absolutely amazing. Um... 
Then you can pay one red, exile Urbrask, then return it to the battlefield, transform. Activate only as a sorcery and only if you've cast three or more instants and or sorcery spells this turn. That's a lot easier to trigger. Um, and Urbrask transforms into the Great Work. The Great Work deals three damage to target opponent and each creature they control. Chapter 2, create three treasure tokens. Chapter 3, until end of turn, you may cast instant and sorcery spells from any graveyard. If the spell was cast this way, put it in into exile instead. Exile the great... Oh my god. That's crazy. Okay. Um, I feel like it's not... Oh god. Okay, we're gonna have to have a whole separate conversation after the set review to talk about Urabrask, Shieldred, Jinkataxius, uh, all Vorinclex, all the Praetors. We're gonna rank all the Praetors. Um, that's pretty great. I love that. Especially for um, the Phoenix deck. That's really, really good. Uh, next up we have Volcanic Spite. One and a red for an instant. Volcanic Spite deals 3 damage to target creature, planeswalker, or battle. You may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library. If you do, draw a card. I don't want to put it into the library. I want to put it into my graveyard. Uh, Volterran, Volderan Thrillseeker is next. 2 and a red for a 1-1 one, one vampire warrior with backup 2. So you could put 2 1-1 one, one counters on another target creature. Um, if you do, that creature gets pay one, sacrifice this creature, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So that's a really fun way to, like, play this for three, put the, um, two counters on something a lot stronger, like a 4-4 four, four or something. So it's a 6-6 six, six now, and then you pay one more to deal six damage to, um, something else. That's pretty cool. And it's not a tap ability either, so you can do this post-combat. Interesting. I like that. I like this vampire just kneeing these Phyrexian werewolves, too. Next up, we have War Trained Slasher. 3-4 for a 4-3. 3-4. 3 and a red for a 4-3 Wolverine Dinosaur. With Menace, whenever War Trained Slasher attacks a battle, double its power until end of turn. So it becomes an 8-8 with Menace if it's attacking a battle. And then if you play this after combat, you can deal 10 damage to something. That's a nice little combo right there, actually. I'm glad these two are right next to each other. Uh, next up, we have Ren's Resolve. One and a red for a sorcery. Exile up to... Exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. That's pretty good. Uh, oh, and that's it for red. Um, you know, it's a hard choice. If I'm trying to pick the most potent card in red. Um... I mean, it has to be a Tali, right? I think it's it's terrifying, and it's almost never going to happen. Um, I remember when we were doing Brothers War, and we were talking about all of the meld cards. That was such a scary combination of things, but they never really came to fruition. Like, they're cool cards, and they're very powerful, but... Um, for my choice, I really am ex the most excited about Bloodfeather Phoenix. I like the idea of having um, a more potent Phoenix deck in standard. I like the addition of Bloodfeather Phoenix into the Phoenix deck in modern or in Pioneer even. Uh, but I think Chandra Hope's Beacon is the most prolific of the red cards. Uh, you just can't beat... Um, Chandra being badass. And there's an alternate version of this card where the art shows her throwing a sun. Like the star, the sun. 
at somebody. Um, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, 